Hello and welcome back to OT the Podcast. We're here to talk about watches, time, and how to spend it. My name's Felix. And I'm Andy Green. Hi, Andy Green. What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up, bro? We are we have got another guest this week. As the uh, title indicates, we're talking to German YouTuber oh, Jenny L calling Zimba. in from yeah, with the indeed calling in from Stuttgart. Yeah, just near the Porsche factory. Yeah, I, I assume she lives right around the corner from it. Drives a nine eleven every day. Mm, sounds like a dream to me. Yeah. Uh, but before we do that, I want to have a chat bit. about something I've been up to quickly. Uh, okay, so this is going to get pretty personal, pretty deep, pretty meaningful. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it was the it was my my last boutique visit, my last in person shopping experience for six weeks. Whilst you know Melbourne, our lovely hometown, is under lockdown and sure, sure curfew and, and whatnot. And you know, so I ended up it just serendipitous timing, but I managed to get into the new JLC boutique here in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little little boutique up the top end of town, Paris end of of Collins Street. For those that have graced our fine streets. It hasn't been uh, open for too long, has it? Started, Pretty softly started, given yeah. given the state of the world, but I was there to see mainly some of the new collection. Yeah, nice. Is it a nice so we, space, first of all? Yeah, it's a lovely spot. It's, Good lighting. Look, it is, you know, not bad lighting. It's, I'll link up some Instagram shots that yeah, I took cool, of cool, uh, cool. the various bits and pieces around oh, the place. La, la. But I saw some of those high-end sort of grand tradition, complicated pieces and tourbillons. Ooh. Bit of Da Vinci, sky, oh God, stars. Little, they're, they're, look, there's complicated and then there's JLC complicated. They've been on a real yeah, we, sort of uh, astrological trip recently, haven't they? Yeah, sometimes I feel like you need a, a scientist and a watchmaker to kind of explain the two different elements it, of what's going on. I think at that level, watchmakers kind of are scientists. You've got to be. I mean, the gra- the Master Grande tradition, I think Grande Complication, uh, the blue celestial vibes, yeah. uh, that's like a half a million dollar watch. Oi. Uh, did you see anything uh, in the boutique that was maybe a little more, uh, how do you say, uh, expensive? You want me to come back down to earth? <laughs> Knock a, knock a few, knock a few uh, zeros off. So yes. the new Master Control Collection. Oh, yeah, hot. Which ones are uh, we? We spoke about those a while ago with old boy Adrian from Bark and Jack. Yeah, so on that sort of tan leather strap, mm. thirty nine millimeter, I think. I think uh, it depends. They're, they're a little. They're, they're, they so they're not. They're sort of upgrades of existing models, and they've tweaked the proportions a bit, and they've got better power reserve in the movements, and uh, yeah, they're just a little bit, a little bit refined from the previous generation. Yeah, so they sit lovely on the wrist. So I looked at the master control date. Nice, classic. In steel, yep. which is like just under, a hair under 11 grand. Just a hair uh, under 11 grand. So like uh, 10,999. Okay, 10,800, Felix. Uh, I looked at the control calendar in steel. Yeah, nice. So high teens, 17.7. Yeah. Did you see the um, the one I want to see is the uh, the Chrono Perp Cal, which is a completely new movement for them, which looks hot. Yeah, it's cool. Is it? Oh, nice. It's cool. Good way to spend sort of 23, 24K. Mm, uh, uh, but I, yeah, you go. I was going to say they're really comfortable on the wrist. They're really mm. slim. I think you pointed out they're not super dressy. I, I think that's from like – yeah, so I think the perception around the master control is like you say, oh, what's well, a great sort of entry level dress watch? Master control. But I think the fact that they've just done a simple thing and put it on this new like Nova Napa strap just shows how flexible they are. And I think that's a smart move. Like, yeah. it's really interesting. It doesn't feel like it does. There's dress watches and there's really dressy watches. And then there's the this sort of feels like what a watch would have felt like when you were like just a regular guy buying a watch 50 60 years ago and that's not what, yeah for, not to be flashy and that's the whole point of the um mm. uh the master control like that's it's the classic watchmaking values like it's it's just a it's just a good watch as they say well i think they've nailed it and i'll try and uh, and wrangle us maybe a review piece maybe to kind of spend some some proper time uh nice watch wrangle in the coming weeks slash months but yeah i feel like uh i feel like one might find its way into watch matchmaker any episode now mm. did you say no anything promises? else in, we'll uh, in oh. a le boutique oh boy okay so a couple of atmos clocks hey atmos how good is atmos 
So there's a little room at the back of the of the boutique, and there was a um, I think it's like gilt with brass, but it's the just the classic atmos- atmos clock. Yep. Hey, so really, really hey, cool. Hey, hey, hey. Um, of course, we we completely understand what atmos obviously. Clocks are. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're definitely not googling it right now. Um, what is an atmos clock, Andy? Okay, so it is a clock that uses atmos- atmospheric pressure. Uh-huh. The gases and the liquids are used to sort of basically power the movement. It's friction yeah. free, uh, so the pressure sort of builds up and down and powers the mainstream mainspring, which kind of gets everything else going. Uh, yeah, in sure. the simplest terms that I understand and I can put it, so uh, changes but, of temperature power the watch. Clock, uh, clock. Uh, essentially the clock, yeah. uh, and so it's these. They're sort of these. Oh, a loaf of bread, half a loaf of bread size, if I'm going to give a descriptor. Uh, <laughs> clocks that you look beautiful on shelves and on desks. <laughs> That's uh, the most and... unluxury description ever. <laughs> it's, um, it's, like a little, it's like a little short cob of... Uh... Artisanal. <laughs> Artisanal sourdough. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry about the con- comparison, guys. Wow. Uh, no, no, but it's, it's I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's there's, there's lovely clocks uh, and obviously they look like they're suspended in uh, with its the sort of brassy case housing uh but there was one mm. that blew me away oh yeah the atmos uh five six eight by mark newson made from yes. baccarat crystal yeah so that's i know that one that's uh, it's the thing with atmos is like they can look a bit sort of old-fashioned yeah yeah like it's it's very you know 18th century carriage clock sort of vibe not mm. so mark newson he's done his thing and he's made it look hot what you, it what's is, the damage? Ah, it's, it is it's it's a little bit of damage. It's forty two thousand nine hundred Australian. Oh, yeah, I mean bucks. that's that's a lot of money. Uh, no two ways around it. But I mean, I think oh, I, I, yeah, Atmos is one of those things. I'm super into it, mm. but then I always forget about it. Um, I got two and Atmos then you facts. Say it again. Yeah, I got two Hit Atmos me. facts. Uh, one last year, former Australian Prime Minister Bob Hawke. It was a bit of a character. Uh, mm. He's a stable. famously scalded beer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he's uh, he was um, yeah, in the eighties and the, the, the were different times. Um, yeah, he, he's estate was auctioned off last year, and they had a, some yep. stuff up, including an Atmos clock that he had, and I think the estimate was two hundred to three hundred dollars. Went for <laughs> a little bit more than that, uh, but that would have been a cool thing to have. Yeah, that's really um, interesting. And the other one is, so I went to the JLC manufacturer a couple of years ago, like a half day just before Basel or something. And it's a, it's an amazing place. Like there's all this, you know, you see the watchmaking, you see the high, complica- the high complications room. But the thing that I liked the most, I think, was like there's this big foyer with like this round room on all over the walls. I like, I'm going to say hundreds of Atmos clocks. Hundreds, Hun- and, and through, because they've been making them for like a long time. Like they're not, they're not new. It's like so one think, of every single model. Oh, well, I mean, not even, but like, and they're the sort of thing that you would get custom orders, and people will, mm. you know, there's just such a variety in style, and they're really fascinating objects, and I am super into them. At what point in uh, the sort of watch collecting journey do you switch out into a sort of ten thousand dollar ish desk clock? Well, I mean, look, the desk clocks are a bit of a, a bit of a risky topic these days. Um, but I've got to say, I'm working from home at the moment. Mm. I'm spending time at a desk. You know, I'm trying to make my own little space here. You know, it's not a, you know, a bit grown up maybe. Warm maybe. up the uh, the room a little. Well, I mean, just I don't know, have like little little cool objet d'art around, and I think that's it's a it's a cool story. It's a cool technology. I'm I'm super into them. The other thing I really like, just quickly before we uh, move on, is it is really something that JLC own. Like they're famous for the Atmos clock. Yeah, hundred percent. It's there's no two ways about it. Yeah. Uh, do you know who pronounces JLC a lot better than we do? Most people, I'm going to say. But who, <laughs> who are you people. thinking of? Yeah, yeah, local. Uh, Jenny L. Uh, yes, Jenny L, uh, YouTuber, wonderful person, good conversationalist. We're not going to call her just yet. Oh, no, why not? I just, I just want to chat to Jenny L. Whoa, hold your horses, Felix, before we call Jenny. I thought we should have a bit of fun mm. uh, and do a bit of a segment brought to you by today's sponsor, eBay. eBay. Amazing. They've been on uh, on board for, for a little while now, so it's great to sort of 
have them back for another segment. Yeah. I thought what we should do mm. is have a bit of a bit of an internal uh, OT the podcast challenge mm-hmm. using authenticity <laughs> guarantee. Uh, maybe some internal watch matchmaking, if you will. Before we get to the uh, the selects, we've spoken about authenticity guarantee. But let's have a quick recap. In essence, if you're based in the US, you can browse and shop eBay's listings with the authenticity guarantee badge, which means that when you buy an eligible watch, the seller sends it directly to a third-party authenticator where they confirm the item and the collateral matches the listing. They also perform a multi-point physical authentication inspection. They finally secure a tag to it and ship it with a unique authentication card. Andy, what sort of watches are eligible, I hear you ask? Tell me, Felix. Thank you. Watches (laughs) that are listed are over $2,000 or are expected to sell for over $2K. Some popular brands and models are automatically included. Smartwatches, parts, accessories are not, and neither are customized watches. eBay picks up the tab on the authentication, which is nice of them. They also cover the two-day shipping from the third-party authenticator to the buyer. Now, as we said at the top, important to note that it's US only at the moment, but eBay or eBay, and they're always looking to expand into global markets. If you want to learn more, head to ebay.com slash buyauthentic. If you want to check out the great range of watches, head to ebay.com slash luxury watches. So the challenge, Felix, is to pick two watches. Only two. For one another. <gasps> so what you have to do and what I have to do is kind of find the watch that screams Andy or screams out Felix. There are a few rules. Are there watches that scream out Andy out there? There, well, there's actually a, a scream Andy function. It's a pusher at 12. But it's, it's a new complication. What, <laughs> the bullhead, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rules of the uh, rules of the challenge, ten thousand dollar US max, max, and it must be what max, sure, 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 and it must be listed on eBay.com slash luxury watches. But it's not the just theme, any thought, watch, is it? No, so I think a theme for this, given sort of where we're headed uh, with the year, is the sort of perfect holiday watch for Felix, the perfect mm. holiday watch for Andy. Mm. Mm. So, do you want to kick it off? Yeah, I'm going to kick it off. So for ten k. I've gone. I've gone a bit more serious. I've okay. taken you know this this pretty seriously. Okay. I danced around a few nice Blanc Pan fifty fathoms, which mm. I thought you'd like. Mm-hmm. Thanks. But they felt a little bit safe given the holidays that you take. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to war torn places. <laughs> <laughs> Just whatever you get up to, mate. Uh, yeah. And then I thought. Okay. Maybe a Panerai. What about this oh, submersible oh, 1950, yeah. 1950 fella, titanium, dark brown strap. Cool. Again, in the budget. Mm, options, options. Then, options. Yeah, there's some good options. And then I thought, bingo, what about an IWC Portuguese Yacht Club anthracite grey dial? Nice. 7899 US. Under budget, Andy. Yeah, but then I found the perfect watch. You're, you're taking me on a, on a, a tour here. I'm leading you down the garden path. Girard Perigo, Chrono <gasps> Hawk, Ceramic Chronograph, oh. Auto 44. Boom. It's a watch that our listeners will know I I love. Mm. Uh-huh. You're, yeah. But you always tell me I'm how actually, much you love it. <laughs> love a Chrono Hawk. But I'm actually not choosing that for you either. Where are you going, Andy? Well, I thought <laughs> it's Felix after all. I wanted a watch that you know, you're not going to see every day. Yeah, uh, and and something that's a collaboration of sorts. Okay. I know you like something a little bit different, a little yeah. bit quirky, out of the box. So I went, yeah. So I went with a Bulgari Endura Chrono Spirit Daniel Roth with a black dial. Huh. Uh, yeah. Okay. What? What? Talk me through what we've got here. I'm gonna tell you about it. So it's a watch that was released in. Well, it was officially released under the Daniel Roth name sure. in 2009, and there's a bit of like a weird story, but it didn't really get picked up at all. Then it was sort of released a year later in collaboration with Bulgari. Yeah, because uh, um, Bulgari bought Daniel Roth, right? Probably around exactly. that time. They... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then it was sort of double double signed, I guess, if you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The watch itself is a, yeah, it's pretty interesting, but it's a stainless steel kind of integrated watch with a chrono and a date feature. It's got the sort of stay bright stainless steel, which is their Bulgari's is take on sort of steel that's got like a bit of a brushed finish to it, but doesn't really you know, scratch up or scuff up unless okay. you really... Like hardened, you know, it's got some sort of coating or something on it? Something like that. Who knows? Something Metallurgy. Like Metallurgy. <laughs> yeah. It's not our um, area of expertise. But yeah, black dial, integrated steel bracelet, 
Um, it's got a couple of pushes. It's got a pusher at uh, seven thirty, I guess you'd call it, which is pretty cool. Um, what is the that date mean? function? Uh, that's the chronograph. Oh, yeah. So you could all, yeah, you could almost use from what I've read on obscure internet forums, you could almost use it uh, for a bit of a GMT if you really needed to. So when this watch was released uh, a decade ago, it was. Sixteen thousand six hundred US dollars on the bracelet, which I think is is sort of fascinating. Um, mm. You can pick it up on uh, on the eBay listing for seven thousand and forty nine US wow. dollars. It's, it's which a, can I just give you my quick top top line feedback on this? Tell me what you think. It's a you watch. I love it. Um, so it's got those. It's got like big. You know, if I say integrated steel bracelet, sort of not like a bezel with exposed screw rivety things and like ears mm. on the side it's a it's very uh stainless steel sports but it's also cool yeah it's it's you know it's not what you'd expect from bulgari and daniel roth like legit watchmaking so that's cool wow and and what, what was the price again seven thousand forty nine and six cents six cents wow that okay uh that's really cool i, I like that um what else you got for me Okay, so that's my first one, which I think is really strong, really wacky, mm. and just an interesting, yep, into interesting eBay find. Yeah. The second one, I look, I'd forgotten about the budgets. Rules are rules; they're made to be broken. Got a little bit excited, and mm. then I just accepted I was going to blow the budget. Okay. And I started poking around. I, I, I stretched it. I stretched it a little bit, just but I bit? started poking around. What are, what are we talking? Like hundred bucks here? <sighs> We've been working hard, so I figured you deserve something nice. <laughs> you got a treat? Uh, I looked at it. Yeah, treat. Oh, oh boy, you're getting treated. So I saw a uh, actually saw a two tone Rolex Yachtmaster two. Oh wow! Which I think you would rock. It's a big boy, but you know, yeah. so are you. Oh, Carson Chrysler was I, one of those. Wow, love that. Fun yeah. fact. <laughs> find <laughs> find a picture and we'll we'll link it up. Yep. Then I saw a Hublot Big Bang Aero Bang Auto oh. in uh, forty four millimeter ceramic, uh-huh. and that was sort of priced uh-huh. around thirteen five US. <sighs> wow, you are really pushing that budget out there, aren't you, Andy? But then, Felix. <laughs> I kept going and I kept going not next that page, much further. Next page, next page. <laughs> just, in, just drag that little budget slutty, you know, what if, okay. what if, and then I, then I saw, I kept on the Hublot theme and I okay, saw no, a, no, no, I like some Hublot. a Hublot Big Bang Chronograph Ceramic Auto 44 Old with, Hublot. yeah, with a Ruby Baguette <sighs> bezel, baby. 17,450 US. Stones. They didn't have any, did they have any rainbows? No. <laughs> the first search I did was rainbows <laughs> um, <laughs> just to see. Just, uh, just in case. But, but yeah, so this is blacked out, black strap, black dial, black hands. That's you know, cool. And then this classic, classic ruby Hublot beds. Mate. Yeah, so that that's how I see you holidaying. So does this mean that we're getting that and we're spending the money allocated for you to get a watch on that? <laughs> I I did I crossed my mind. I thought, you know what, I can go without. We'll just double down on, okay, on the Felix nice, present. Nice. Share watch. Um, couples watch. Hey, Love it. Awesome. All right, what do you got for me? Uh, well, I guess we'll come to the. We'll do the thing of like which one I want at the end, right? We'll do that. Yeah. We'll do yeah, that at yeah. the end. So, uh, like you, I got a bit excited. I, I rolled up the the watches with the uh, authenticity guarantee sticker on them, and I started mm-hmm. scrolling. Uh, and I really liked it. Like, I just want to take a moment to say just hitting next and, like, not knowing yeah. what was coming was really cool. Yeah. So the first few pages, it was Grubel Forcey, Patrick High Complication. Oh, and I'm like, I'm like, no, no, no. I need to, I need to skip, down, <laughs> skip down the rank a bit and get it into uh, rein myself in on the budgets. Uh, but I must say that Someone I've also gone to. wild, Andy. I have, oh. not, I have not stayed in budget. But oh, I, Felix. I know. So I found some great options. I was tempted uh-huh. by a Romain Jerome. There were some uh-huh. cool out there options there, but I thought, no, no, Andy's not that fun. Then I saw a really good, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite watches, uh, Patek uh, Gondolo, you know, in sort of a really that rectangular case that's hot. But, you know, that was like a lot out of budget. So mm-hmm. I decided to not go with there. The first one, though, it was like one mm-hmm. of the first watches I clicked on classic Andy Green material. Okay. I called it Tell the, me about it. I call it the safe option. It's a <laughs> Panerai Radium Manual Ceramic Case Pam 997. This is a big Sick. boy, Andy. This is 47 millimeters. 
It's, okay. uh, I think it's a 2019 release, boutique only, black matte ceramic case, really nice, like military, wait for it, green dial. I mean, Andy loves some green mm. and uh, a matching green rubber strap. The price on this, United States dollars, 10950 Oh, that's basically still in the budget. It's got 10 yeah. in front of it. Yeah, that's what, that's, <laughs> that's what I see thought. How, this is an insight into how my mind works. <laughs> so it's $10,000 somewhere. Um, yeah, so I, this was like classic, like it's holiday. It's, it's bigger than you go, but mm. it's pretty fun. It can, you know, stand up to some some knocks. It's, yeah, I just thought it was a, a good, and I know you've been, I initially first looked for that uh, that blue bezeled submariner. Uh, but they didn't have any when I was looking. So, uh, oh, the submersible. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry it's the submersible, not some The submersible that you've been yeah, yeah. going on about every second minute. Uh, but this was what <sighs> I, you know, I thought it would scratch your pam itch. Then Love I it. went for what's, the, what's the stretch. Is it a stretch? It's also a slightly, uh, slightly out there, but also pretty much in your wheelhouse. I think I'm really excited about this one. Actually, it is the mm-hmm. IWC Pilots Doppel Chronograph. It's an Auto forty two millimeters in yellow gold. What? Yeah, IW wow. three seven eleven. And this is this is not just any IWC pilots watch. They're all great. There are a lot of you know big pilots and stuff out there. This is their IWC's first Doppel chronograph. It was released in nineteen ninety two. Uh, you know, using the work of Kirk Klaus and uh, Richard Hambring. It's a really really important watch for IWC as a brand. And mm. for uh, you know watchmaking in general, like it made that that split seconds complication accessible for the first time. The fact that it's in yellow gold is just dope. I'm into it. What do you think? I'm into it. I'm into it, and I'm keen to hear. Are we are we done? Are we no, ready no, to... no, no, no. It's uh, it's also for the convenient low low price of ten thousand nine hundred fifty dollars US. Oh, yeah, it's still in the budget. Yeah, it's good. So now do we are we now at the point of comparing? No, 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 because I care about you that much, Andy. I also wanted to give you a third option, the bonus, bonus. option. Yeah. Tell me. I look, I'm like, look, if you didn't want the, you didn't want a steel or a utility metal, you didn't want gold, what about both? Seamaster Diver 300 meters, the new gen SMP, uh, 42 mil in two-tone. From Omega. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, from Omega. So I know, I know, I'm a big fan of this watch. You're a big fan of this watch. Any of their sort of, you know, Seamaster divers would have been a solid option. But I thought holiday. What says holiday more than a little bit of gold, a little two tone? This I one, like it. I like you it. You can have for six thousand five hundred and thirty three dollars US. Andy, boom. What do you reckon out of those three? Which one are you going with? Hmm. Mm, this is tough. This is tough. Bearing in mind, sort of the the holiday spirit. Yeah, that that Jeez. gold IWC. I mean, it's a bit more you know finicky. Like maybe if you're in like a five star hotel holiday, you know. I mean, put on a nice NATO strap and vintage though. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I wouldn't wouldn't, get, wouldn't want to get it wet. That's true. I think it's probably the Panerai. Really? Yeah. Why Andy? not? Yeah, it's, yeah, that's massive. Yeah, cool. No, okay, 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 okay. All right. You doing it? It's the no, it's IWC. I think it's the IWC. Okay, okay. You've had yeah. a last minute one eighty. Yep. And uh, what about you? What do you think of uh, my two? I don't have to think about it. It's got to be that Bulgari. I've never oh, seen. So... I've, I had never seen it before. It's legitimately cool. The only thing is, and I don't think uh, you you know you mentioned it, but I saw it in the listing. It's a big boy. He's like fifty five is... millimeters across. Yeah, but it's sort of integrated lugs. So it'll, it's yeah, a, it's, it's a big watch. I think you could pull it off. Mm, I, you know, I think you'd be fine. Okay, all right. Well, all right. Well, this was fun, and yeah. we'll link up all of these, uh, all of these on our socials and, and and in the show notes, so you guys can kind of see what we've been uh, what we've yeah, been talking about. What we've but been shopping. as we mentioned, if you want to learn more about uh, eBay's. Uh, eBay's authenticity guarantee service. Just head to ebay.com slash buy authentic. And all of these watches were on ebay.com slash luxury watches where we uh, had a had a good time perusing. Felix, it is time. To get back to the episode. Well, it's time to call Jenny L. Yeah, let's do that. Get her on the phone. 
if you've watched Watchers on YouTube, you will have absolutely a very clear idea about our next guest. She is Jenny Alley, one of the one of the the most rising star. Rising star. I was going to say like the the you know new to the scene, hottest, crazy, blowing up. Uh, watch YouTubers, which is a you know really competitive space. So in a in a fairly short amount of time, Jenny Ellie's come in from Germany and you know just just killing it. So hi Jen, how are you? Hi, hi everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm good, and I'm very excited to be on this podcast with you. Yeah, it's great. How's um? It's uh sunny in Stuttgart at the moment. Uh yeah, it has. Uh, we've survived a heat wave, and then it rained for a couple of days, but now it's it's sunny again is very nice cool oh, how's the weather in in melbourne is it good uh well it's no it's crap it's the middle of winter so i mean it's it's like like you know we were you know just right. before we recorded um you know we were laughing at your idea of a heat wave i'm sure you think our you know two degrees yeah. and a little bit of rain is is not winter but uh yeah it's uh it's going okay it's a cold summer <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> Yeah, very good. Well, look, it's uh, <laughs> it's just what we have to deal with. Jenny, who are you? Because Felix yes. mentioned, uh, we, we talked at the start about a rapid rise uh, to success on YouTube, but you didn't exist uh, in the watch space on YouTube before sort of January 2020. And I wrote down some stats last week, 75,000 subs, 4.6 million plus views. I'm sure That's crazy. they've both grown. <laughs> who are who are you and where did you come from? Um, oh, that's isn't that a deep question, right? To begin with, yeah. um, well, um, well, I'm like you said, I'm I'm from Germany, and yeah, that was absolutely spot on. I've started my YouTube channel in January, but I have been working on a German YouTube channel before that, so I'm not new to the German um, listeners and uh. viewers on YouTube. So I've had, or we still have a German watch channel called Watchwise. And uh, yeah, just just your regular German girl uh, talking about watches online and enjoying everything that comes with it, basically. Okay, cool. So you were able to kind of transition some fans over from the other channel to your sort of personal I, channel. Yeah, I think I think so. I've I've seen a couple of comments from people uh, saying like, "Oh, it's it's Jenny." Though I've I've just um, I've popped up in like two videos in uh, in German. So, okay. but like, yeah, I'm happy to see them come over and say hi. But why did cool. you why did you decide to sort of make that leap into watches? Uh, that leap into watches. Well, it all started pretty early on. I think watches were always some sort of like thing in our household because my dad he he he's known for buying all sorts of like crappy watches from flea markets and nice. trying to repair them. Yep. And so there were always like some random like Cassie was lying around the house and um, my, he was my boyfriend back then, but my husband now, he, when he first, when he got his first Rolex, I think that was the beginning of, of the end of all of this, of, of the normal <laughs> life. And that's how I started to really look into these um, really high end Swiss mate watches and all that kind of stuff. And, who, yeah. who, who can relate? The beginning of the end, I think. That's kind of, right. Slide. It it feels like like falling deep and deep into a rabbit hole that I can't get out of. <laughs> uh, and and so when so when was this like in terms of you know have you been you know personally interested in watches for for the last you know five years ten years? I would say um, well I've I've got my I've, I know I can remember how I um, when I graduated when I was eighteen mm. I wished for a watch for a wristwatch from my parents and it was a swatch back then. Yeah, classy. So I always felt like you need to have watch a wristwatch to to be like a complete person. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but I think really like like with all the mechanical watches and stuff, I would say like two and a half to three years ago is where I first really got into it. So I'm I'm I, I would say I'm I'm fairly new to everything. Yeah, and I'm learning something new every day and. I don't know about you guys, but I, I always, like every time when you meet someone, you always think they know so much more than you and you feel kind of <laughs> stupid. And you just listen, like nod, like, mm -hmm, wow, I you're so impressed. I don't know if you heard, we had James Dowling on the podcast. So yes, yes oh, we do meet people like that. Yeah, that you are a bit, look, I, yeah, you do. But then I think you, you meet them the first time and you think that. And then maybe you meet them the fourth or the fifth time and you realize they really don't. Like, you know, just as much as them, you're all reading <laughs> the same stuff and you're all following the same Instagram accounts. So it's, 
I think right. there's a lot of um, what's the word? Sort of uh, is it peacocking? Is it not quite not quite peacocking, but a lot of you know flexing, puffing puffing people up and going, oh, I, I know everything <laughs> about I don't know 1920s no Cartier. Everything. No one knows everything. Yeah, yeah, no one, there's some no people. Who, yeah, if you, if you call yourself an expert, I start you know getting sus. So Jenny, the, your YouTube channel, obviously, you know these views haven't happened by accident. You have that background. Um, in the space, but what you have mm-hmm. really nailed is the way you put the videos together from the thumbnails through to the editing and, you know, just the all round videography skills. What Thank you. have you learned along the way to sort of maximize the impact of, you know, videography? It's something that a lot of people find really tricky, same with photography, but you've mm-hmm. managed to sort of bring that in and nail it. So what, I guess, what have you learned and, and how have you managed to do it so well, if you're happy to share? Well, yeah, of, of course. Uh, well, we, um, I've always been working with my husband, uh, mm-hmm. like together we, we had, and we still have, but it's kind of on the side right now, uh, just like web design and online marketing. And we had to learn, uh, how to produce content for like websites mm-hmm. and stuff. And so we, um, had to teach ourselves how to take photos and like videography and stuff, um, and we took everything that we've learned from this and poured it into like filming watches and it, it's very interesting to see how you learn something new with every watch that you film like even today I feel like Rolex is very easy to film or to shoot in general I don't know why yeah but then you get to these like our language watches for example and they're so tricky to film because they always like yeah. blue for some reason like yep. the, the sapphire crystal and stuff and um yeah, you just you keep on learning with with every video, and you kind of find the perfect. Like when you think you figured it out, you have yeah. to start over again, and I, then you I get can... like new ideas, and you see what other people are doing, and you get inspired, and you wanna wanna be as good as them. Yeah, I can hundred percent relate about it. It's such a weird sort of thing that some watches are are tricky to film or to photograph, but the, I think it's. I have you ever uh, shot Moza watches? Yes, I've, I've oh, I, I just can't get them like the, all the domes and the crystals. They're, they're just so hard to sort of nail. Oh, yeah, the yeah. dome crystal. I, I There was this um, with the Aventurine dial. It was a rose gold mm. case and I can't remember. Was it like a Ventra concept watch? Um, and I filmed it really like from the side so you can mm. see the domed uh, crystal on top of it but that was like the only shot I was happy with like when you <laughs> try to film it any other way it just looks weird and doesn't that's the thing and I think you can relate and many others who uh, shoot watches or take photos of them you kind of want to do the watch justice how it feels like and looks in person and you're trying to capture this on camera and it, it sometimes it's so hard and it's so frustrating because you're like oh my god this looks so much better in real life yeah. how can I how can I put right. that on film um, oh that's that's such an interesting point from a watch photography and, you know, in a more professional sense, like you're talking about, I have a bit of a theory bubbling at the back of my head and it's a bit of a hot take and it's a bit controversial mm-hmm. and I've been, it's, it's, I've kept it to myself for a long time. Only those really close to me have heard oh, this, really? but yeah, <laughs> everyone, I hope you're sitting down. Where's this going? Hot take. <sighs> I'm about to fire some shots. This is a headline, uh, the headline of the, uh, the, the clip. Do yeah. it. <laughs> okay. So my theory is that the Omega Speedmaster Professional is so popular and a big part of why it's so popular lately is because it photographs so easily and looks so good in photos that it's perfect for Instagram. And then you see it in real life and it's a bit underwhelming. Whereas Ooh. you talk about Langer and some other bits and pieces mm-hmm. and they look amazing in real life, but they're really tricky to photograph and really hard to bring out the beauty. It, that is Moses a- is the perfect example. True. I don't That's know what a good you guys think. Take. That is a good hot take. Jenny, what do you reckon? Um, well, I have to agree because like when you do the ultra macro shots of the Speedmaster of like the sub dials and you can see the little hands and it looks like snow has fallen on top of them, at least to me. And it looks so interesting and, and so nice. And then, yeah, it, I think you've got a point there. Like we get probably going to get a lot of people very upset now. Do you think people buy watches because of the way they photograph? Yes. I've, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, piggyback off your theory, Andy, because it's something yeah. that... <laughs> I I had a theory about um, – so I'm sure I've spoken about this before. Um, apparently restaurants now design menus with Instagram yes. in mind. 
Yep. Which is why you don't see things like cream of mushroom soup because it looks terrible. Edible flowers. Yeah, all 100%. that stuff. And I, uh, <laughs> my, my theory is that watch designers either will be soon or already are designing watches with Instagram in mind. Um, one example, and I, I asked wrong. the guy who designed it, was the, um, the Bulgari Octo Finissimo. I said, look, does this, you know, was this a factor? And, he's like, and he laughed and he said, no. <laughs> um, but he <laughs> said what it is, one, is because is. good watch design is all about reflections and light. And so it's a good, and it's the same you said earlier, Jenny, with Rolex, like they're really good to photograph because they nail mm-hmm. the design. Like they've, they've thought about how the light plays. And if they do that right, it'll translate well into a, a photo. So I reckon there's something there. So you, hold on, you're telling me that this the Omega Speedmaster Professional's sort of 60 plus year success yep. isn't just because of Instagram? <laughs> Uh, maybe, or, or maybe they, I don't know, maybe they weren't thinking about the, the interplay of light when they made a watch to go to the moon. Potentially. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll accept. I'll accept. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, that's a very interesting point. That's that. Yeah. That's cool. But yeah, hundred percent Instagram and social media has to be changing watch design to some extent, especially if you think, uh, micro brands and other bits and pieces in the space. But what I want to hear, um, and if you're, if you're happy to talk a little bit about it, what watches does, does Jenny L like? What do you find yourself <laughs> collecting? What are you drawn to lately? Um, well, I wouldn't, that's the thing. I wouldn't call it collecting what I do. I think I'm just mm-hmm. owning them because I feel like people who collect are, are a bit more serious about like a theme in their collection. And I mm-hmm. just go out and buy and I don't really think too much about what I already have or what I might be getting. Um, because like basically the watches that I like to buy and wear are, there has to be some, it sounds very like cheesy probably when I say that, but there has to be some kind of emotional connection to them. Like I, mm-hmm. it, they have to make me feel something, which is very cliche. Oh, that's very cheesy. But there's sometimes I like, it. I think, <laughs> totally, I think you might be able to relate because sometimes when, when people talk about a certain watch that everyone seems to, to like, really like and enjoy and think it's great and then you look at it and it's like nah, you don't really get the point mm. um and and i know some people are like okay maybe that's it's not really like super emotional but they can appreciate the watch for the mechanics um for like the design for a different reason they're still going to buy and wear it which is which is fine but they have to have some sort of story to them which is why i i like the date just for that reason very much because it's such a classic and yeah i know a lot of people wear them which is i mean i think it's great i like to see my watch on other people i think it's super fun if if you spot someone wearing a similar watch to yours in public and you kind of give yourself like a knowing nod and it's like ah no (laughs) um so when i think about the watches that i have they they all have some sort of history or historical thing attached to them or something that i just like about them yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's I think that's up. that's really I think that resonates with me and and, and certainly Andy though uh, you know he's I can't speak for your your watch buying habits Andy um, but you, you uh, impulsive <laughs> erratic yeah you're not, you're, you are not impulsive and erratic you are calculated and I bet you've got spreadsheets <laughs> over there um, you, you you mentioned you got a, a, a date just there can you tell yeah. uh, us and the listeners about what it is 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 it a newie an oldie or Oh, it is, it is sort of a new and an oldie. It still oh. has, um, I, I was, I managed to get the, um, the infinity bracelet, the Jubilee that has a hidden clasp. Oh, cool. That was cool. very important to me because I, I really, really, really love the Jubilee bracelet in general. But I have to say that the clasp with the newer ones, it kind of, it interrupts the bracelet in a way that I dislike it. Mm. Um, I think it just, doesn't flow as well for me personally and so it's the jubilee with a hidden class oh amazing and it's a 36 millimeter it has the silver somber style and the fluted bezel which is only way to go in my opinion Mm. uh, on a date just and i've picked um the very controversial diamond r markers to go with it because i wanted to go all in on this one and i was like you know what screw it it's going to sparkle it's is so it, flashy. It's wow. God. Is it is it controversial? Do you do you cop cop comments about that, or do you? Because I wouldn't have thought it was that out there. Well, it might be a German thing. 
that people here okay. are like, oh, well, I like your date dress, but the diamonds are a bit too much. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's that, what that, I does, that does play for, you know, my understanding of the German people. I mean. Yeah, okay. I want to talk about <laughs> diamonds, but cool. not just yet. I obviously we're sort of in various stages of, of lockdown and I, I have a feeling, Jenny, that you've <laughs> maybe made a few purchases uh, a bit like in, in, in my style, but you've bought a, a Seiko or two recently. Yes, I did. I did. Which was, uh, that was a lockdown by that Seiko. <laughs> Both of them, which I, I've bought recently were like lockdown purchases because I was, I was so bored and I really <laughs> wanted something new and uh, I went online. It was a bit of an impulsive buy, which I normally don't think I'm, I do that much, like being impulsive when Except buying. Except for these really two, these two recent uh, purchases. Aside yeah. Aside from that. Um, mm. What did you get? Uh, what are they? A cycle tank, the um, not the solar one. I think they've got like three or four different like cycle tanks, and I always get them mixed up. And I'm super bad with reference numbers anyway, so I yeah, sure. please do not ask me about any <laughs> reference numbers. Hang on, are they, are they on your Instagram? I'm just gonna have a quick. Uh... Um, yeah, I think they are on yeah, Instagram. Okay. I think oh, did I? I think I've posted the <gasps> the red dial, the cocktail. Um, oh no! I've got an embargo on yeah. your new releases, your new pieces. Well, the red cocktail time's up there. I said, have I uh, have, have I broken the news? Yeah, it's the red cocktail. Oh no, up. that's that, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh yeah, and the tiger tank is up as well. Oh, is it? It's yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. I've oh, with some boots. with my Doc Martens. <laughs> yeah. How are you finding the cocktail? I really like it now, but to be completely honest, at first when I got it, I was like, oh. It was very <laughs> underwhelming. I don't know why. I, it looked so great on, like, they've got this stock image on the online mm. shop. And it looked very great on stock images. And then I got it. And I thought that the it has, like, a sort of red sunburst mm. finishing on the dial. In certain nights, it looks dark brown. Mm, and yeah. I didn't think it would look dark brown. That was a bit of, like, a... Me and the bracelet I was trying to I've, I've managed to do so um trying to shorten the bracelet and that nearly drove me insane oh that is it is it um the one with the the collars the pin and collar yes. one? Oh, they're yes. the and I, I have to look up on YouTube how to do it and a guy I can't remember his name it was a very sweet video and he was trying to explain it and that I'm sure he he's doing a very great job but I was so frustrated at this point and I was just like raging in the office and like i can't get this to work you know i'm so upset for me for, yeah i took the um the brace a lot of mine i think within 15 seconds um the thing okay. that i i don't the, that i took some getting used to for me was the crown it sort of i feel like it sticks out a bit too far is it just me or are you are you going to validate me you're staying silent that's that's um, that, it's all, uh, I, I think it, it, it works fun. okay i don't yeah, okay. mind the crown too much sure okay cool let's move on to the next question <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but honestly though i do have a question um do <laughs> you like that segue andy king of the segue oh, um <laughs> we've sort of talked about who you are but the thing that i find really really interesting is who your channel is for mm-hmm. who's it oh for? yeah that, that that's a good question well Thanks. it's kind of it's <laughs> you're welcome it kind <laughs> of is for for people like myself because because like you said i would never call myself an expert like not in 100 years so it's just basically all of the question i've been asking myself um, or that I'm that I have asked myself in the beginning is what I'm trying to answer in my videos mm. of just trying to give like an overview of, of popular models and what I think are popular models like you know I've got like a video on the Speedmaster and like the Apollo 8 version of it mm-hmm. um, you know, different divers for example just things that I was curious about and and I'm trying to really answer a lot of questions that people have in the beginning I think just maybe trying to to make it easier and more accessible for even more people. And I think there's a lot of of, of channels and podcasts and and blogs and Instagram accounts who do a great job at this and just trying to add a little bit more to it, I guess. Yeah, I think that's really, really um, good because I think YouTube is great, especially for that sort of 
uh, discovery. Like you're working out what you want. You want to see what something looks like. Mm -hmm. I think YouTube's such a good place for that. And I think people get caught up in either the uh, that more drama. sort of the drama of it, or they get uh, too self involved and you know start yeah. going down the references of Rolex screws from 1972 to 1984. Which, yeah, you're right about that. I think I, I think uh, it's yeah. it's a really really strong you know not to uh, toot your own horn. Um, it's such a really good place to be coming from. I think it's yeah it'll really I think that's okay. a lot of why why it, it seems to be working because you're, you're answering pe questions people want to know. What I really enjoy is the the borderline educational nature um, and the structure of the videos. Uh, you you know you're not playing to sort of the clickbait or the hype too much, although. Oh. I think I think you, you had an early explosion. Oh. You had an early explosion on the scene when I when we were kind of doing a bit of research into what exactly mm -hmm. we talked to you about. It, something hit me, and it, it hit me because it was an image, and it was an image that had gone viral everywhere. And I hadn't connected the dots, to be honest with you, back to you. But you are responsible for that uh, gold. Gold uh, Green Dial uh, Submariner, yeah. wasn't it? That yeah. just went <laughs> bonkers. So it was a uh, Felix. Uh, you you probably saw it. And I don't know if you've made this connection yet or not. But it was a gold sub with a yeah, green yeah, dial, yeah, which yeah, just yeah. went bananas. And I think you made a video with it, and people took screen ga screen grabs and was like, mm -hmm. "Oh my god, imagine if this would happen." Now, I have a few questions around this video. <laughs> the first ahead. one: Were you expecting it to go so crazy? We kind of, we, we sort of did. And I'm saying we, cause, cause my, my husband and I, we both work on, on both channels. And uh -huh. I, I remember how we were sitting down. It was like sort of late in the evening and we were sitting in our office and we had this idea and we we're like, Oh my God, if, if this works out the way we want it to, like if, if the like visual looks good and if we can make it work in post, um, this could be really cool. And people might maybe want to share it. And so we're like, okay, we're going to try it and see how it works out. And um, but I wasn't, I wasn't aware that it was that it was that viral. To be honest, I I, I know uh, some people posted because um, like Facebook groups, um, I've seen two pictures of it posted, and then yeah. there is like two blogs I think that posted it. At least, at least. Uh, Maybe I just on, didn't was, realize. Yeah, it. I think you've missed a lot of. It. I think some pretty, yeah, some pretty large, large platforms um, stole your content and wrote about it. But <laughs> that is that's a great <laughs> answer. Uh, my next question is: obviously, times have changed since January, and when you launched those prediction watches, now mm -hmm. we haven't seen uh, nearly uh, anywhere near as many releases from the major brands. Yeah, but all those how prediction have articles. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, oh, well, no, we don't know. But have your predictions, how have they, if they have changed since, you know, dropping that video? Mm. What do you think we'll see from, you know, say Rolex? What do you think's coming out? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it was it was more of a, like a wished for kind of watches. Mm. Not so much, I wouldn't probably say predictions, though I would really love to see all three of them, to be honest. I think when looking at the video, maybe the most likely, though, I think, think it's not that likely at all it would be like a coke uh gmt Ooh. with like the red mm. and black i think that would be from that video the most likely perhaps but i don't I, and, it would what, be i would be sorry <laughs> no you go you continue sorry i was just gonna cut you off and ask you some questions <laughs> oh that's all right i i just wanted to add that i don't think it's it's very likely that rolex is going to come out with with another GMT on a Jubilee in the different. We'll clickbait you either way, Danielle. So yeah, I, I was just going to ask it supports it. <laughs> I, I was just going to ask what the other two predictions were. Um, there was a it's like a steel Smurf. Yeah, nice. Was the first cool. one, and then the last one was like a full gold Submariner Green Dial Green Vessel. Oh, yeah, yeah, Green Hulk. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Mm. And I mean, I don't think we're going to see like a blue. The Mariner and Steel, because we've had Tudor coming out with the Black Bay 58 in blue, yeah, which was great. I'm still a big fan of it. Um, people were very quickly, very much um, over it, which that I can kind of understand. One. That was so exciting. I'm, I'm still super happy about it. I think I know many people are like, "Oh, this is such a boring release, and it's just a different mm -hmm. color." But for me, it's so much more than just a different color. I mean, obviously, when you look at it, it is, but. I think there's so much more behind it, the way they released it. 
yeah. um, just how everything's changing and that they are. I feel like Tudor is really listening. Maybe that's just wishful thinking and it's just a happy coincidence. I'd agree with that. I think Felix would as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd also add that I don't think every watch release should or needs to be like changing the world <laughs> or offering something revolutionary. Like it can just be a nice watch in a different color. That's cool. Hey, yeah. I absolutely yeah. agree. That's that's the thing. We always, I feel like sometimes it's damned if you do and damned if you don't with yeah. new releases. Like when they do something completely crazy and off the top, people are like, oh my God, they've completely lost their mind. This is not true to their like core or like design philosophy. And then they do something that is really like in line with what they do. And then they're like, oh, born to dare. Like, hell no, this is super boring. <laughs> um, so yeah. Which I think actually, speaking of, you know, damned if you do and damned if you don't, uh, your first video was a bit of a uh, epic one. You managed to get a week on the wrist with uh, Lang Odysseus, mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. which is, <laughs> what a way, this was like a couple of months after it was released. Yeah, what's it like? I don't think we've seen that watch. I've We've not touched it. I don't think it's... It Released in December 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and around then. We, yeah, we, we had to, because uh, that's the thing. And I'm really fond of Lange, and I might be super biased because it's just a like, special connection <laughs> I have with Lange und Zune. Well, at first, they're German, and I'm German, so mm -hmm. we have something in common. And they were the first brand to reach out to us and just say, like, hi, we love what you do, like, on the German channel. Yeah. Um, we think it's really great and we just wanted to say hi and that was such a I had like my hands were sweaty reading that email because I was so overwhelmed like oh my god they know who we are this was such an, cool. like an intense feeling and so because they were the first to reach out and just say hi and and just like saying how they are very impressed with what we do which is obviously a great compliment um, we started like talking and they invited us over and we were able to look at um, um, like the whole entire company and we, we saw the watchmakers um, we disturbed them in the work day <laughs> and it was just very cool and then um, a couple of months later when the um, Odysseus was about to be released uh, we, we sent them an email and we, we talked to them and they were very nice and and yeah send it to us so we could film it that's um, amazing that's why i was that's why i i chose this to be my first video in english because yeah. it was kind of Good like call. like a thank you to them and because that was also one of the i think the odysseus odysseus sorry um is is such a great piece from alang and soon in general so all of these things all these boxes ticked and i was like yeah i need to get that for my first video oh good times good times <laughs> see that's a strong start and it's impressive uh, as you just point out watches uh at the best of times are a tricky subject to talk about uh, a lot of long and you know tr tricky complex words and names for things so the fact that you do it in english uh, when it's not your sort of first language is very impressive i must say oh uh, thanks but like i did live in in scotland for a year so that helped a lot. Sure. I mean, I think everyone in Australia is super impressed by people that can speak more than one language because, yeah. you know, we've got like, you know, I've got like two years of high school German and, you know, that's that's all. But your name is so German. When I first read it, I was like, oh, Felix Scholz. Is yeah. that a German? <laughs> my Yeah, my father's, my father's German and I've got a super German name. Oh, um, cool. I really like it. Yeah, whenever <laughs> I go through customs, this is a fun, totally non-watch related fact. Whenever I go through customs in you know frankfurt or whatever um mm -hmm. they're, they're always they say, like, welcome home felix no they're not they're like spring into deutsch i'm like no i've got i've got an australian passport um and they're like but why not and i'm like well i'm australian and they're like no you're german <laughs> you've got a german name why don't you speak german i'm like these are guys with guns and all this sort of it i'm stressed so you know um they want, they want you back yeah, maybe. Uh, actually, they, I, they don't want me back because I can't become a citizen. But that's, uh, you know. Anyway, oh, back to watches. Oh. Back to watches. <laughs> Danielle, what has been your favourite release of 2020? You can't say the Tudor Black Bay 58 because we've all just <sighs> rocked a little bit too long about that. All the That was first. Mean, Number two. My favourite release in 2020. Oof. 
it's a tough one. You know, the first thing that came to my mind was the Breitling, the Rainbow Breitling release. Yeah. Oh, Black or what blue? is it? It, it has, it has such a... 57 heritage. 57 heritage, right? It, it, yeah, it's Super like, Ocean 57, I think. Ah, okay, okay. It like... Um, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, Sixth damn. Because I'm, I'm kind of drawn to rainbow things. I don't know. It's just fun and, and bright and colorful. And Did you like I the black or the blue? Oh, the black, for sure. Yeah, it's nice. I think the contrast it? is very nice with the black. I Have think, you seen I the think regular 57? A... Sorry, Felix. No, no, you go, Andy. I was going to say, have you seen the regular uh, 57 in the Heritage 57 in, in the metal, Jenny L? Uh, no, I don't think I have. I, I would Not be lying yet. if I don't have a picture in mind about that one. Okay, well, it's the same model, just doesn't have that rainbow uh, dial and handset. But mm-hmm. it's a really interesting watch. I had, had a <laughs> had a bit of time with one a couple of months ago, sort of make this all about me. But uh, the, like talking of controversies, this whole episode is just full of hot takes and controversies because the bezel uh, is a bit <laughs> polarizing for a lot of people. Some people love it. Some people yeah, yeah. Uh, are a bit like, oh. But in the rainbow, it just works. It is a really comfortable watch on. It's super thin, uh, interesting proportions, and it's just it's different enough to kind of go, yeah, this is this it is cool because it's out, not right? like every other. It I, stands I, out. I yeah. think Brightling has just had a really good year. I like the the Chronomat as well. It's a really cool yeah. new release. Yeah, yeah, it's no. that's an interesting one. I'm I'm, no. I'm not the oh, oh gosh, I'm I'm oh. uh, confessing that I'm not the biggest Chronomat fan. More okay. controversy. Okay. Hot take. Hot take. Sure. Right. Yeah, this so, is love so, hot takes. So you've, so you've got the uh, the Rainbow Brightling. Um, any others on the on the short list? I don't think so, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. You've taken enough. away that's my good. Black Bay and Blue, which. Well, that's which would you buy, the Black or the or the Navy Blue? If if I bought one, or yeah, I I, I own the the Black one. The oh, you own the Black, black one. one. Okay. Yeah, and I'm very fond of it, and it's it's the one that I share with. Uh, my my husband the most because when I was going to ask on, about that, when um, I put it on the leather strap. It's super easy to just share, and we both wear it. Do you? So you're both into watches, and he mm-hmm. did he was he first with the the Rolex, and you sort of pinched it off he, him. Is he earned more in the beginning, um, and uh-huh. so he was the first to buy more uh-huh, high end uh-huh. watches, and and then he was uh, happy to share, which I'm very grateful for. Do you share back? Do you all do you share all your watches, or are there some that are like, oh no, don't wear that one. Oh, you can't you can't have the the diamond. Uh, well, he has he has one watch. Um, I'm happy to share all of mine because um, I'm I'm that's the thing. I'm trying to be very careful with my watches, but they end up getting bumped into like door frames and stuff. And yep. I'm really trying very hard to not move my left arm, but it I find it very difficult to. So I'm happy if, if he wears it because he's a very, very careful watch wearer. Oh. He, kinda, he sort of perfected the immobile left arm. And so there is a watch of his that he would not want to see me wear. I think it's like a full gold <laughs> um, submariner that he has. It's his absolute grail and he has saved um, for quite a long time. And I remember when when he got his first, like, swiss watch he was talking about this like years ago like oh my god one day like a blue submariner yeah. that's like his because I, I think his dad was talking about the blue submariner before and i sure, kind of sure. stuck with him and this is his absolute grail and he's very um like careful with it and that's the watch that i'm not going to wear I think. yeah like <laughs> if, you, if you look at that watch the wrong way you're scratching it <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's really really uh how do you say it's sensitive for like yeah. The opposite of scratch resistant. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a solid gold watch. It's got to, you know. Uh, well, perfect, yeah. perfect for diving. What are you <laughs> talking about? All right, so speaking of growls, speaking of growls, Janelle, I think I know what yours is. I th- yeah, I, I think hear, so. I want to hear it from you. Okay, well, I, I've said it before and I happily say it again because it's such an amazing watch. It's obviously the Rainbow Daytona, the rose gold. A rainbow Daytona. Oh yeah, which is just the most amazing watch ever. It's oh, it's a dream. It's I've never seen it in it? person. Well, it's I think the entire concept of this watch is what I love about it. It's 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 a Rolex, and I'm known to be a Rolex fan girl. That's old news. Sure. And just mm. the fact that they have they 
took a Daytona and just went absolutely crazy on it. And and they do it to perfection. That's the thing that I admire so much. It's not just mm. some like slap some diamonds on it and call it a day. They were like, you know, what we're going to do is I think they fully committed to this crazy um, rainbow look and it just works out so well. I think Kara from from Houdinki, he, she wrote an article a couple of She's got one, right? Back. Does she? Like own one? I feel, I, I'm pretty sure she's got one. Oh wow. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay, but I'm, I'm, who I'm, knows? I mean it's it's been spotted on her Instagram. I can't we haven't seen receipts. Uh, there was an article as well. Oh, right? Right? I feel like there was like a Vogue article, like Vogue Living or something, and it was Ooh. Yeah. Oh, well, I've, I've, I've read the one on, on Hodinki, the, like on the website, and I think she describes mm. it very well that it's, I mean, obviously it's very flashy, but that's kind of the yeah. point. It is such, it's like such a luxury item and it doesn't hide it. And it's just fun. It's like, there's, there's probably no boring moments in your life when you wear this watch. I can't imagine there would there would be. And look, we'll we'll do a first here on on OT the podcast. Let's put a call out to our German audience. Uh, and if you're a German listener or in the region <laughs> with a rainbow Daytona, white or you know rose gold, any any really, any any rainbow Daytona that you have, please hit up uh, Jenny. Uh, we'll link up uh, the profile in the show notes. But Jenny, you should make this. Can I ask Jenny? You should do that call out in German, just in case they're listening to this and don't yeah, understand English. English. Should I should I speak <laughs> yeah, German yeah, for, just, for a sec? I've made it okay. thirty five minutes in. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, an alle die in in Deutschland sind oder deutsche Zuhörer, wenn ihr eine Rainbow Daytona habt, um, sagt mir Bescheid und vielleicht kriegen wir ein Treffen hin. Ich würde mich mega freuen. Einfach auf Insta schreiben und um, das wär's. Dankeschön. <lacht> Okay. Well, I hope we can trust you because yeah, you could have just been trash talking us. <laughs> <laughs> like this is the hidden message. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's to all the it's to all the customs agents saying, "Yep, keep Felix, keep we're Felix trending crap. in Germany. We've we've been involved in this <laughs> massive controversy. What have we done?" <laughs> um, no, look, I hundred percent agree with you about the Rainbow Daytona. It is, uh, and I think Andy does as well. It is a phenomenal watch. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. Oh, it's just so good. In fact, it's a watch I post to Instagram when I'm, you know, I want a bit of extra engagement when I just want to have have a bit of fun with the followers. When you want to get your likes up, Andy, it's <laughs> um, having a down day and I just need a bit more engagement. More Look, I'll, in fact, I'll take any. Is it for you? Is it? Is it? Would you take if I said to you, Jenny? Thank you so mm-hmm. much for being on the podcast. Um, I've got this lovely Hublot Sapphire Rainbow Bezel Big Bang. Oh, that was Would cool. you take that as well? You or is mean it just from, a Rolex? Uh, it, hmm. Is it all rainbows? It's most rainbows. I want to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know. It, Hublot does not really speak to me. It's it, it's it's sure. might, it might be unfair to to like generalize yeah, yeah. all Hublots, but. Uh, they do a rainbow. I will say it if you've never seen, uh, they do do a rainbow really well. It works. Spirit of Big Bang, especially. Like yeah, it's, a, it's that strap. big over the top watch with a big mm-hmm, over mm-hmm. the top bezel. It just like it. It um. It's not pretending to be anything. It's not. So I think it's uh. It's a good, good, good fit. Okay, I have to take a look at it first. Yeah, do it. Please, please put a, some sort of hypey video up there about you know your one eighty on Hublot and. Something uh, <laughs> I should do a video <laughs> on like rainbow watches. That would be yeah, great. That would it. be so much fun. Yes. Wouldn't it? Okay, speaking of rainbow watches, did you see the Breguet? I think it's the Poseidonia the, that had the sort of seaweedy vibes with the rainbow rainbow sort of call it seaweed on the dial and then yeah, around kelp. the bezel. But kelp. It's got kelp on the dial. Kelp. Wait, wait, wait. I think I think it's a new marine collection a high jewelry piece. Let me just I think I've seen something when you say seaweed it kind of rings the bell the seaweed yeah. uh gems I'll i'm, I'm sure notes. um i'm sure they will love that re- we'll link uh, it out representation no nah, look it's it's lovely but it's more to sort of greeny uh greeny color tones it's not a rainbow it's though. just gem set Ooh, yeah. no, I, is it because when i google it it just no, i don't think mm. that's the one yeah it's, no i haven't yeah. but i need to i need to that now you've, you've inspired me to sort out a video that just has rainbow watches in it. Chopard. <laughs> Chopard do great rainbows. Oh, they do gemstones so well in general. Chopard There's really a, yeah, oh, I was, I saw it. There's a, they've got one that's sort of shaped like a wine barrel. I think it's even called the, the Grand Crew or something. <laughs> and it's got a, 
agate diamond bezel, and it is it is legitimately a subtle, like you would not notice. It's so beautiful. Anyway, um, <laughs> as you might have guessed, I'm very into stones as well. So you know, we can keep talking for another eighty minutes at least about various diamonds and rainbows. <laughs> for sure. Okay. Well, while <laughs> while we're on the uh, the controversy and tra- drama train. <laughs> Were tell we? us your yeah yeah yeah. Uh, okay. Tell us, Jenny. I was just sh- firing shots at the industry left, right, and center. Uh, <laughs> do it. <laughs> luxury smartwatches. Where do you stand? <gasps> bom, bom, bom. Oh, okay. Oh. Dun, dun, yeah, like, add that sound effect to it. Well, I've I've had it in my Q and A where people were asking me about luxury smartwatches, and are you? I think that's the the important question to begin with. Do you say that luxury smartwatches are from like? Would you consider an Apple Watch a luxury smartwatch, or would you say no? You mean like from like manufacturers that are known for mechanical watches and yeah, now do that. smartwatches? Like that tag, okay. well, you blow it's my, an interesting oh, question. Oh, okay, okay. Luxury smartwatches from luxury brands, because what is the most expensive Apple Watch cost? couple of thousand right all the way up to so expensive. They, they, was... have they still got the real gold ones or they dropped them i think ignore that but even like the best apple watch you can get is probably what like two, a grand or two yeah the ceramic yeah, the edition the hermes ones yeah. get pretty so the ceramic hermes edition ones are fairly they're not cheap okay so luxury watch manufacturers making smart watches okay where do good. you stand oh, <laughs> i really oh man i don't want to like poo poo on any and on any like new ideas because i always think it's a great idea that they're trying to think outside of the box but that might be a bit too much outside of the box for me because we do have we did have a takoya connected with us Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, a couple of like months ago um just like testing it trying it out and it was really really difficult to to Maybe we were just not smart enough for that smartwatch, but it was really difficult to, to you know, how to first like install everything and connect yeah, it to mm-hmm. your smartphone. And it just made me feel like they were trying so hard to, to like jump into that market, but it, I think it was too early for them to release that because the, the like software wasn't good enough for it was the, like the user experience wasn't that great i think that's what i'm yeah. trying to say do you have a yeah, kind of, can i ask do you have an mm-hmm. iphone mm-hmm. Yeah, and i had to that's, use that's my that's old a... android for it yeah it's really hard i think and i've got the, the same experience like whenever i've used a, a google-based smartwatch it's just mm. not as good as the apple ones like right it's it's kind of a paradox for me because when you are an established like luxury watch maker and you like specify in mechanical watches, I don't see why you would want to jump into the other market, given that there's so much that you have to learn. I mean, like Apple, for example, they've been doing this since the beginning of of smartwatches and they've got so much experience in it and they know what the user is looking for and what they're not looking for. And I feel like there's such a, they have to catch up with so much like I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to pick on on, on Takoya, but no, no, it's 100%. like a good example. Yeah. But there's like so much of catching up to do for them, and I, I, and it's also the thing like I I don't buy a Takoya for its like it, I'm not going to buy such a short lived sort of watch from from Takoya. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's it's difficult. I'm 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 just not a big fan. I guess. I think I'm not a Oh, sorry, Felix. Speaking no. of Tag Hoyer, what did you think of their new uh, limited edition Carrera? Did you see the th- sort of 39 millimeter? Um, the white dial with the. Uh, white dial, yellow. blue subdials, yellow. Montreal. Accent. Yeah. Oh, I really yeah, liked Montreal. it. I was just looking at it yesterday because I've been, I've been doing a bit of research on Tag Hoyer and because I think it's a very interesting, like they are in a very interesting position right now. Like online, there's a lot of like for and against Tag Hoyer talk going mm. on. Mm. And so I was trying to look into it because it's, it's, it's sort of the video that I did on um, Jeje Le Coultre where it's it's kind of weird that they are so well known kind of, but mm. no one really wears one, which is, I mean, obviously people wear it. Um, everyone always talks so highly about it, but then they will go for a Submariner. And I thought that was <laughs> Something so I've been wanting. <laughs> it's true. Man. Something I've been wanting to mention. I, 
speaking of technology and Tag Heuer, their website is really, really good. It's have new. you? It is. If you hop on, it, right? <laughs> yeah, if you hop on and press press like the pusher, you can start the chronograph. So I'm like, oh. you can start and stop it, and you can use the oh, like functions on the watch. We'll link this up just purely for fun. That's cute. But it's one of the best. It's pretty think, new. It's one of the newest websites. Yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of like watch brands having digital sort of presences, oh, they do a really good job, and I think yeah. they've got an interesting place in the market. And mm. I think the people the people are going to be closed off and closed minded to to certain things and to certain brands and to certain models, and you're never going to change their mind. But you're right. There's some people can appreciate it for what it is, and some people can't. But can I, I think I, um... that this year. They've had a strong year. What were we going to say, Felix? Yeah, I'd just like to, um, to speaking about Tag Heuer, and just like go back f- to the smartwatch thing, not to sort mm-hmm. of, you know, go into it, but I think it's really interesting. Like I really, really agree with what you're saying, Jenny. It is a bit odd, but f- if you go back to like 2015 or 2014, whenever the Apple Watch was released, it was mm-hmm. really different. Like the, the Swiss especially were freaked out. Like yeah. I, I think that's something that sort of has to be factored into why all these Swiss guys are are keeping smartwatches in their their lineups because they felt like they Sports had to. Two point wasn't it? Well, yeah, they didn't know what was going to happen. They thought maybe you know everyone's going to just you know not stop buying Rolex and just buy Apple, and I think that that was a really a, a very panicky moment for the industry, and and yes, I think we're still seeing it play out. Like either they've they've okay. invested in the tech and they've got to continue it, but. You're right. It is. A, I think it's a really niche user that buys a you know three thousand dollar disposable <laughs> smartwatch. But but that's very interesting what you say because that made me think because I've I've not been that deep into the like whole watch world, like for that like yeah. 2015 that was I was still God, what was I doing in 2015 I don't even know. Oh God, don't um, so me. for me it's very interesting to to hear that it was. I mean I can imagine that it was probably like some sort of shock, but that it was like a quartz crisis 2.0. Yeah. I wouldn't. I thought that because to me it's it's now like being in this and what I've learned and like the kind of situation I'm in right now I would never like I would buy an Apple watch for an entirely different reason than for what I would buy yeah. a mechanical watch and it's so different and it's interesting to 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 hear you say that they were sort of scared well but I think it was just that fear of the unknown like they didn't know what was mm-hmm. going to happen we right. have to be here. We have to be involved. We have yeah. to do something. Yeah, and and and, and Tag Heuer was really early with that, and they were very aggressive in, in you mm. know in, in pushing that. So yeah, just a you know a bit of a, a footnote there that I think is mm-hmm. is worth worth um, noting. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. And they didn't completely pivot into <laughs> smartwatches. I think that's the other thing. And look, you can whether or not you the end product is something that you like. I think there's something uh, respectable about you know pivoting or not pivoting your whole business but trying new things and you know you can't you can't blame a business for changing with the times and looking to adapt and looking not to, cracking you know, under pressure yeah not cracking <laughs> yeah. but it's 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 an evolution of a business and I'm, I'm sure at various points like if we want to talk about quartz it's you know you can talk about mm-hmm. the rolex oyster quartz and i often you know i love imagining and joking about the board meeting where you know Rolex, which was a diff- very different Rolex as it is today, but Rolex back then, you know, in the board meeting where, you know, they came very close to potentially making everything quartz. And obviously there's the oyster quartz, Amazing. but could you imagine if they had done that, would they still be around? Mm. Like it would have been an absolute disaster. So no one is impervious to, you know, this sort of, uh, you know, behavior in a, in a business sense. And I think that at the end of the day, people, Gets so emotional and so connected with you know particular watch brands and yeah, that could be a true. super strong you know passion of love for one and a dislike for another or whatever it is and they get so attached uh, that they forget and lose sight that you know these are <laughs> businesses. Yeah, that surprised yeah. me a lot to be honest. When when like starting to to learn more about everything to see how people are really like either die hard or like super offended by whatever you say about something that they it's agree crazy, or disagree especially with. Especially on YouTube. You're brave. YouTube yeah. is oh, yeah. the comment <laughs> section is hectic. Some, <laughs> yeah, some some comments are really wild and it's like, wow, it sounds like I have insulted his entire family. Yeah. Even though I just said that I I don't know, like I dislike a clasp and it's like <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, like who hurt you? I'm very there are sorry. Bigger, there are bigger issues in the world right now than, you know, what someone on exactly. the internet thinks Yeah, about exactly. 
it's it's very it's very it's, it's sometimes it's very entertaining but it, it can be difficult sometimes but my yeah, god sure. that's okay <laughs> what do you think the most uh unexpected part about you know your journey in watches has been the most unexpected i was very like like i said that was very unexpected to see how like even though you just say like oh this is like when you post something and be like hey this is my watch have a great day everyone like on facebook and then people are just going to shred you apart for wearing this watch and you're like oh my god what did i do what have i done I wrong just so liked it. yeah i just liked it i'm very sorry kind of uh i was i was very surprised to find out how how much um like groups there are and like some sort of like fan bases and how there's like some sort I feel like there's always like you have to kind of read between the lines sometimes when when people talk about watches and um, that was that was very surprising and and just in general mm. how like to find out how as as like a woman um how it's so different to to look at like the women's like collection of a brand and like you know on the website when they have like women's men's watches and then mm. you see the differences that was also very surprising to be like oof, there is a big difference do you think difference. that they should be separate you know men's and women's mm. watches is in 2020 does it even make sense to you as a as a female in the in the sport well i i did talk about that i think it was like on a live stream that i did on instagram and someone and i did bring this topic up and someone did have a great point because i was i was saying how i think it's it doesn't really make sense to separate these two i'd rather have them sorted in like diameters or yep. I don't know, like material case uh like material or whatever um but then they they said like well i mean there's still like a business or like an industry and they have to just target and market to, to different groups and that's probably just the way it works best for them if they're just uh, like specifically targeted to women or like specifically targeted to men which which is i mean i kind of get it if they have to be profitable and if that's the way to go for them then okay i guess though i personally would would like it if they would maybe try to yeah i think sorting by diameter would be a good idea to start with nomos Cause... style right nomos do that nomos, don't they? yeah nomos are pretty good on that front. yeah they're, they're very neutral and i think i mean they are doing great i would say people really mm. enjoy their watches and you can see how a lot of people, and especially women, they do enjoy Nomos a lot because they're so, I mean, Bauhaus in itself is very, like, I would say gender neutral. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that's even a Yeah, thing and I mean, like, you know, there's um, not, uh, you know, the thing that always gets me with with um, with women's watch designs is that they make it a bit smaller, they make it, you know, they give it a pastel mm -hmm. dial and strap and put, like, a tiny <laughs> row of diamonds on there. Right. Oh my. Do, do all do all women want that? I don't know. Like, mm. I think it, it's. I think a lot of men would like to wear that as well, sure. but they just don't feel like they can do it. It's like when ordering like an apple teeny at a bar, and then you kind of want to drink it, but you sort of not allowed to. <laughs> yeah, it's not they're great. I love a good Are you a Scrubs teeny? fan? Are you a Scrubs fan, Jenny? <laughs> I am. <laughs> That's the thing I was thinking about. But it's it's so funny, oh. and I kind of feel like the same goes for pretty much everything. And I mean, at the end of the day, watches are an accessory. If you, I would sure. say, if you like it or not, they're just an accessory. Um, they're not necessary for your survival in this modern day. Nope. And so, people want to wear something that they like and enjoy. And I think a lot of men would enjoy a bit of like sparkly stuff on their watches. Sure. And so do women as well. And then there's also the other way around where. Um, I just want to wear my Black Bay 58 and be be done for the day. And Do you know what you would look fantastic in? Oh, tell me. <laughs> oh, tell I'm going to tell you. A uh, white gold submariner. Just saying. <laughs> I a really, a really scratched up one, though. Like a really big Dinner is going to be tense tonight. <laughs> I think it's I, love, I think it's that the the thing with the you know the the watches for for men or women I think it's just assumptions like that that sort yeah, of it is. you know like uh, you know that terrible uh, like IWC's old ad campaign like engineered for men and like Breitling you know five years ago they had some terrible ad campaigns but you know hopefully things are getting a bit better yeah I I think they're 
I, when you say Weitling, I really like that they, I mean, the brand ambassadors, correct me if I'm wrong, it's still um, Adam Driver, Brad Pitt and Charlize Theron, I think. Yep, yep. Yeah, and a fair few others as well. Yeah, and they've got like some, some uh, a bunch of surfers, both men and women from around our part of the world. So, yeah. And I think Chris Angel what? too as well. Chris Angel? They like do? The magician? Is that the magician? The mind freak? Yeah. Is that Chris <laughs> Angel? Thought, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> He's only does Vegas appearances though. Oh wow! Okay, I and you don't even that. see him when he's there. Yeah, he's there all, he just he just takes. Okay, motion. side note: on anyway. Chris Angel, but a whole bunch of his older videos have been going viral lately for like just how really bad they were. But it was like 2003, and everyone was just so blown away by the was, uh, the special effects. I was binging that uh, on MTV in German. Wow, <laughs> that was. Is this um? <laughs> <laughs> is it the point in the is it the point in the uh, the interview where we ask speaking of Chris Angel for 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 Jenny's recommendations, Andy? Yeah, Reckon? aside from uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got the Chris Angel recommendation. What else have you been enjoying? <laughs> it, it, just like anything. I think yeah, so. Anything. Like you've been spending time at home. You know, what have you been doing I'm aside from lunches? Well, Reading, watching, listening. Oof, what have I been doing with my time? That's a good question. Well, I talking about Freibling and Charlie Theron and Chris Angel and entertainment. Um, everyone should watch The Old Guard on Netflix. It's a very yes. cool movie. And I really like it. Ooh. The Old Guard was good, though. That was a really enjoyable Friday, Saturday night film. Get a pizza and a couple of beers. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Right? it Me too. And okay. what else? I would I would always recommend people to, to start a new hobby. And for now, you should do archery you should start archery because that's what oh, i wow. have to do and i bought myself a target for at home so i'm shooting behind my house because there's no one don't worry i'm not sure um, is it is it a picture of your youtube rivals on the oh i don't right? have any i am friends <laughs> with everybody it's adrian from oh, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh no he's got one of the the most like you know i don't know if, if do you know what asmr is yes yeah, <laughs> and I could listen to Adrian all day because it's such a soothing voice. That's a headline. I'm now. joining dots here. I'm joining dots. You spent a year in Scotland, right? <gasps> that was way before he moved, I think. Mm, okay, was it reconnaissance? <laughs> Interesting. So archery, we'll take up archery. I don't think that'll. I've got a. I've got a five year old who asked me to print out pictures of crossbows on the internet. So maybe <laughs> that's pictures? maybe that. Yeah, well, he's worked out that he that he can ask me to print things off, and I can do that for him. So oh, that's every so often, he's like, "Could you print me a picture of a crossbow?" I'm like, "No, no, that's not going to happen." It's it's random, but I like. Sure, it's okay. disturbing as well. Oh, I love that. All right, last question: What is yeah. JDL's next watch? Oof, my next watch. That's a good question because Rainbow I've been Daytona. asking that myself a lot because I thought my next watch is going to be a um, tank from Cartier. Hence why I bought mm. the Psycho tank to kind of warm myself up for it. And sure. now I feel like the, the itch has been scratched. And okay. now I'm left with with some sort of hole that I'm trying to fill, maybe with a Cartier Santos, because I really like the... Jenny L, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. It was oh, an absolute you for treat having me. to finally chat. Uh, we'll link up your website, your YouTube, everything at Jenny, J E N N I underscore L E L L E underscore on Insta. Yep. Uh, you'll find all of the other great links and we'll, we'll link everything up in the show note, especially the videos that we've been talking about. Uh, and yeah, manufacturers of smartwatches, send them to Jenny. It'd be great. Yes, please. <laughs> I've changed my mind. What okay. if, Lang- what if Langer do a smartwatch? Prove me wrong. Oof. Oof, oh indeed. wow! That just... I think that's I think that's where we end it. Felix, yes, Andy Green. That was fun. Yeah, it was a lovely chat to uh, Jenny, and I think we're going to have to take her up on that watch matchmaking. I think we've got one hundred percent. We've got a challenge. Maybe we can do like some sort of YouTube crossover, and we'll become viral. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give her the uh, the VIP VIP treatment. We're going to give her the quicker turnaround time. I think we can do this. <laughs> I thought you were going to say month. we've got to suggest like actual good watches. <laughs> Yeah, she can read them out on her channel and oh, yeah, it'll explode. Uh, hey, hey, so if you want to get the VIP watch matchmaking uh, treatment, how do they, how do people do it? You send us an email. The email address is otthepodcast at gmail.com. 
and then you link to your verified social media profile. <laughs> Blue ticks only apply. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of verified profiles, two, uh, three accounts that are very soon to be verified. OTA.podcast, yep. Andy Green yep. Live, and FK Schultz. That's us. Um, thank thank you. you. Thank you, Andy Green. Thank you, Felix. Thank you, Jason, Major Tom Media, for bringing this all together. Thank you to uh, our sponsors. Support us, support Felix, support Andy, support us on our endeavors and our content journeys uh, by supporting our sponsors. It's the best That's thing right. you can do. Yeah. Uh, and support thank you each for other. Listening. Support each other in these uh, these times, I think, as well. Glow ups, glow ups for everyone. Yep, just be nice to each other. And on that note. And five star reviews, please. <laughs> wow, we're all like a well of positivity. Let's end it. Yeah. Bye. Boom. See you guys. <laughs>